Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever good. time of day it is that you're listening to The Bench with Jenna and John. Hello and welcome along. John Wilkin is alongside the one and only St Helens second rower, Matt Whitley. Hello. You were going to go legend then. I felt like you were going to legend him. No, I felt like you were... I mean, did, you did, are. You not sense, know. did you not sense a big word come in other than... <laughs> A second row. Anti climax. <laughs> oh, no. no. Scintillating. Matt, okay. Let, should we do it Sensational. again? Sensational. Let's, wait, let's start again, okay? Right. Um, good morning, good evening, blah, 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 blah. John Wilkin, hello. Matt Whitley, St. Helens legend. Welcome to the band yeah, with Jenna and John. Now we're talking. <laughs> legend. I'm not, better, I'm not so sure about no, legend. I am. But... I am. I'm sure. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Um, You've been out with a shoulder injury. You've had shoulder surgery. Yeah, three weeks ago. Um, yeah, the labrum tear, so I got that fixed up. Um, yeah, Professor Dr. Funk. Professor Funk. Yeah. Funk. Funk. Funk Tim Ryder. <laughs> so, yeah, another, another nine more weeks, I think, and I'll be good to go again. He, but... He's made some money out of rugby players. Professor Funk, can he? Yeah. Who was talking about Professor Funk? Was it Alex Wormsley? I think Wormsley? it was Alex Wormsley. Okay. But you think, how much does it cost to go see him? Just to go see him? I think it's about five, six hundred quid. Six hundred quid. And he's like knocking six hundred quids out, like left, right, and centre. And then and what, essentially, what is... you pay six hundred quid for this doctor, right? You go into his room, Professor Funk on the door, and he just rags his shoulder around yeah. until it nearly dislocates and then operates on you. Yeah, and on Monday, I've got to go back, and I think there's two of us going on Monday, so he'll make... 1,200. 1,200 quid before 9 o'clock. Oh, God, wow. he'll, be, he'll be straight on, like, Vivino buying, like, some expensive wine. He's booked a ski trip. Matt's, Matt's yeah, got his, his, his ski trip. He's in Val d'Azur next week because of Matt. <laughs> Perfect. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, cheers, So, funky. another nine weeks on the sidelines. How are you handling it? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in pretty good spirits. I'm quite lucky that there's a few of us in the habit a minute, uh, <laughs> so we, oh, we can all funny. keep we can all keep it's each other company. But uh, yeah, it's not ideal. But you know, we've got a lot of quality players in, in the squad who can step up to the plate, and you know, which they will do. I'm, I'm pretty sure of it. Are you yeah. a good rehabber? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I stick to the rehab. Like, I do what I'm told basically, and um, yeah, just crack on with it. But but you're detailed. Like, no. talk to us about then, because uh, like, I've played with players who are good rehabbers, and anybody who's good at rehabbing an injury has usually got an unbelievable attention to detail with how they train. Yeah, probably not, my detail is probably not, 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 not there, but I just do what I'm told. Oh, yeah. That type of thing, so. Is that, does that, <laughs> we're I just put all, you as a player as well? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I just, <laughs> yeah, give me an instruction I'll, and I'll do it. Um, Anything. The less, the less I have to do, the better, but I can <laughs> just do as I'm told. Yeah, rehab's tough. It's like a tough place to be. I used to hate it's, it. I get so bored. It's a lot of days at the minute, just sat on a walk bike for half an yeah. hour at a time. Yeah. Doing the same gym. Yeah. Gym exercises this, and the one-arm thing. But... Yeah, the, you do this, like you crawl up a wall with your hand or use a broom handle yeah. to push your arm up. I'm using a yeah, broom handle it is to move my arm. I'm not getting very far, which is frustrating, but... <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm doing really well and then I try and move yeah. my arm to the side and I yeah. can't get it out. The sense of achievement from pushing your hand up with a broom handle has yeah. never been higher when you've had a shoulder up. No, so, like I said, I'm quite lucky that there's a few of us yeah. at the minute to keep each other there company. which few, is... and Joe Batchelor was another name added to the list last week, ankle ligament damage, was yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, which is it's just not ideal and, you know, um, well, I guess got it for Joe. Um, but, yeah, like I said, we've got a lot of lot of good players there at Saints what can, you know, step up and... Well, I can say it's great for the podcast, isn't it? All these um, injured St. <laughs> Helens players, because I, like, if you were playing, we wouldn't get you on, and you are a legend, so it's fantastic to have well, another yeah. St. Helens legend on. I've just on bumped into the Sam in the, the tunnel, and he Sam said... Sam Tompkins. Yeah, and he said, mm -hmm. oh, they must be scraping their bowels, so I'm not so sure. Well, just, just on <laughs> Sam. I'm not so sure how that's just, gone. Just on Sam. We, we actually did have a chat to him um, ahead of this. Obviously, he played in the south of France with the Catalan Dragons for, what, five years? Yeah, five years. He said, uh, you fluent in French, so John was going to ask you a couple of... Oh, you laugh. Why are you laughing? Yeah, I think my French is probably not great. <laughs> so, well, come on, what do you mean we... not great? How long <laughs> were you there? I spent five years, though. Five years? What do you mean your French is not great? I probably should have attended more French lessons whilst well, I was there. What do you mean not great, though? Describe not great because that's not good enough. I five could... years in a country, what is the limit of your French? I can reserve as a table at a restaurant. And order some food. Yeah, that's Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> order some food. Well, um, go on, then. 
What do you want? Well, uh, get, book, 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 what do you table. want? <laughs> Oh, you put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not doing so, it. Come on. Can, I've forgotten. Can what I just say to you? Hang on, Matt. So, Sam, I was, it was a bit of tongue-in-cheek. So, Sam, it was a bit of a stitch-up. He said that um, at Catalan they have, like, beginners, intermediate, <laughs> yeah. advanced classes for French. I think and I, you were constantly with the I new stayed. players yeah, I think I in beginner. I think they also coincided with, like, the earliest time after training. So, I have to wait around. Oh, there's French <laughs> lessons. Yeah, I'll go to that one. You then. get the first yeah. one then. So, How yeah, it was, nice it was of you, though, to stay back with the new players. Yeah. I think every time there's new get players, everyone, Matt's, Matt's <laughs> cultural get involved. architect, get yeah. them in, make them feel comfortable. Yeah. He's pretending to be bad at French just yeah. to welcome the new players. That's yeah. right, isn't it? Yeah. Get a yeah. good yeah. connection yeah. with the... Book, the book a table team. for two. No, I don't What do you know. mean? You don't know. You no. just said that's what you can do. just John, that he's not fluent in but, French. But then when we asked him, when we pressed him on it, he said, I can book a table. When he lived there, he could. He doesn't live there anymore. He lives... Well, I'm just assuming somewhere close to St Helens. I'm not going to say exactly where you live. I don't know anyway, just for our viewers and listeners. Um, just also the background noise for people listening and wondering. We are at the Totally Wicked Stadium. It's not an there audience, live audience. A women's <laughs> Super League game going on uh, St Helens Wigan. Um, so that is the noise that you are hearing. But Thank let's you. get back to you, Matt Whitley, five years in France. Before that, let's go back to the start. So you grew up a St Helens supporter. You were you were in the scholarship program? Yeah, I was in like the town team, the scholarship program up until 16. Before then, I went on to, to witness for the Under-19 Academy. So why didn't it work out at St Helens? What happened? Um, it wasn't good enough. You know, it's like St Helens, they have quite a big catchment area, a lot of players and... You know, they, they have that pull where they can bring players in from out of town as well. And they have a lot of players who are really good quality. And I just wasn't one of them what could get in at 19, at 16 for the under 19s. Um, it happens, like you see a lot of players moving on. Um, that was when I got my chance at Witness. And John, you have a story about. Oh, Matt. yeah, I always remember Matt. When I think we played Witness. And I remember, I remember having a class, you might not remember it, but it was after a game. And I was like, mate, you need you to get yourself to a big, big club yeah. or to a different club. Because I saw him, Matt, like, you know, it's different. Do it's you so... remember that conversation, Matt? I'm sure it was here. Yeah, it was here, yeah. I'm sure it was here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I vaguely remember, like, I know I remember being here and you know, playing against you and stuff. And... Yeah, yeah. What was it like, what? the the legend of John Wilkin? Oh, f***. No, I was well past. I was like a stinky old cheese by then, Gemma. I was like, Also, oh, it was when you were playing for Toronto. <laughs> yeah, no, that was the stinkiest of the cheese. No, with that, just going back to 16, is it such a difficult age to make judge on anybody, like... And Matt's now one of the standout bat rowers in our competition. We're going to talk about bat rowers because I just don't think they get enough credit in our game. We don't talk about bat rowers and their job enough. But 16 is such a big time. It's almost impossible to make the right call at yeah. that age. You see a lot of players. I look back in the, the team I played in like the, in the amateur league when we was under 16. I think we had something like 13, 15 players sign professional contracts with like clubs, St. Helens, Warrington and stuff, and the amount of players that are still playing now, whether it be in Super League or, you know, Championship League One, like, there's not that many. There's probably around, probably about five players still playing now. So it's a massive turnaround for, like, 16-year-olds coming through, and, you know, it's, like I say, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to get through and, and to break into the first team and onto the Super League, but... Can you go back to that moment, though, when you were told you weren't good enough? Like, what, what does that do I to you? I don't know if it was thing? like that. <laughs> well, hey, Matt, sorry, you're not good enough. Bye. <laughs> Move out. Well, I'm yeah. just trying... Yeah. Yeah, it was, you know, it was upsetting. It was, you know, I was pretty gutted. You know, I've been a Saints fan my, my whole life and, you know, wanting to play for them my whole career growing up. And, yeah, to be told that it wasn't going to happen, then, yeah, it's obviously... It's gutting, it's upsetting, but... Then with when one, one door closes, another one opens, and that's what happened at, at Witness, and I'm grateful for, for that opportunity that I got. So let's fast forward to the conversation that he had with Legend John He can't remember, but he's oh, very this. polite. No, he's very polite, young guy, to even suggest he remembers. But that, 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 that going to Witness, like how much confidence did you get from that period in your career? Because obviously, so 16, right, you've been flattened. Like, your family, yeah. everybody's buzzing, you're at Saints. Then you get let go, and that's quite a deflating experience. How restorative to your career was Witness? I think it was massive. I feel like there's, there was a pathway as well from at Witness of players, you know, moving from the academy into the first team. And when I was there, it was like Adam Lawton, like, and uh, you know, Jack Owens and like Tom Gilmore, they were all pushing to the first team. They were playing games, um, so there was the pathway there. It, it was it was evident that 
you know, if you tried hard, like you worked hard and you was good enough, then there would be the opportunity. Yeah. And you know, I was quite lucky. I, I, I made my debut in 2015, and then you know, I went on to play 100 games for the club, which you know, I'm really proud of. And you know, I, I love my time at Witness, and you know, the way it ended, it wasn't ideal. It was no. getting relegated, but. No, that's, that's rugby and yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff happens, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Stuff does happen, yeah. unfortunately. Bad stuff happens. Yeah. <laughs> so then let's move to the south of France. Five years you spent there, you didn't pick up the language, not even <laughs> to order a meal, clearly. Can you count to ten? Yeah, just about, I think. Okay, we won't test think, you on that. I feel like my daughter would probably be better really? at French than... And me, but um, well, Sam Tompkins was telling us a story that his kids swear at him in French, and Sam <laughs> doesn't no know idea. he's starting to pick up on the swear words <laughs> that they're using. I feel like those are the first words I got taught. The bad ones. Cat, yeah, yeah. Off the lads. I, yeah. feel like I a lot more off the lads. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't order a meal, but you could tell yeah. someone to <laughs> off in French. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's it. So and they always say, "Oh, say this to him, or say this to another player." And, like, you go and say it, and they're like, oh. Right, nice one for that. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> Well, I've got this story. So I've got a, a business in Manchester and there's an Italian barber's right just down the road from me. And the guy every day sees me, he goes, hey, <laughs> gives me a hug. Anyway, so every day I'm like, hey, and he goes, <laughs> gives me a hug. Anyway, this uh, my mate can speak Italian. He goes, <laughs> hell, like, did you let him get away with that? I was like, what? He said, <laughs> he calls you an <laughs> every day. <laughs> been calling me a Five years. I've been hugging him and everything. He's Thank like, you. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Hey, ciao, ciao. He's pals yeah. it. Then as soon as you walk away, he's like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Matt learned all the rude words. Okay. That's perfect. Yeah. So and what then, is it obviously like... Obviously, I felt obliged to then teach them the rude words in English. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it was, it, was, it was quite fun. Such a northern thing. Yeah. We send the northern guy in to teach the Frenchman <laughs> English swear words. What, what was it like living in Perpignan? Because we've obviously got Sam part of the team now. He keeps... Like, his little lips are closed, aren't they? He doesn't really tell got, too much. Yeah, I've got a theory on Sam in that regard. I think, you know, when you love something... You're reluctant to tell other people about it because they might enjoy it. So I think Sam's been really selfish. I'd say he loves the south of France that much. He's that scared of telling people how good it is out, in yeah. case they come out. Yeah, and then he has to deal with them. And now he's now, if you think about it, he's genius. Now he's in charge of recruitment. Mm -hmm. He can cherry pick who comes to the <laughs> south of France. He's yeah. like Hugh Hefner, if rugby league Hugh Hefner. He's just like drawing. He's, and you made the cut. You were yeah. one of his choices. He told me it was really good, so I'm not if it's just you and Jen <laughs> what he's telling <laughs> so I think telling nothing to yeah. Yeah. Um, but but it's no, good. It, it was good. It was you know it was a, it was a good experience um, like for me and my family. Um, my missus was she was six months pregnant when we made the decision oh, to, wow. to go over to France, which That's big. was pretty difficult and um, at the time and you know we had two kids over there and both were born in French hostels and it was, and we had the COVID, which was over there, so it was pretty difficult, um, just not having that family network. Um, but the summer and the lifestyle, it, yeah, it was, it was really good. It was, you know, it was unreal. Like, we had a lot of nice experiences when we was there. Um, what was the best one? I feel like just being able, like, a day off, just being able to get in the car and just go down, drive down to Spain or yeah. spend the day in Spain. What's, how long does it take to drive to Spain from Perpignan? Two probably hours? About, no. no, less. We're probably like 30 minutes on the border. Oh, wow. Um, about an hour to Girona, you've got loads of little, like, like, loads of little towns along the way, all the way down to Barcelona, which is like two, two, two hours away. Yeah. So there's, yeah, there's loads of spots. Yeah. Like within like an hour, you could go an hour and a half. Um, but yeah, no, it was great. Yeah. Did you ever have any aspirations? I'd love it, yeah. When I, when I was, when Saints reneged on my final contract, touchy subject, it's fine. I'm over it. Do you want to talk about it? Not can... really, no. no. Okay. Uh, we'll do, yeah, I'll talk about it when I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not that dramatic. No, they, there was a bit of a change in mindset. And then the only... So did they actually renege on your contract? Oh, no, it was a bit like... Um, I'm trying to think who I was reading at the time. I was reading about uh, Blake Austin. So Rowan, there was an article between about yeah. his interaction with Rowan Smith. Rowan Smith said, well, you've got a contract, don't worry about it, we'll sort it out. So verbally? It was, it was similar to that. I okay. was told so I you thought your future was here and well, then I was ended just up going in retire Toronto. Here, but anyway, I had to go to Toronto. You became which... good friends with Sonny, though, so that was Yeah, that's always... fine, yeah, real bestie, bestie mates. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, where was it going, Jenna? I have no idea, nowhere, absolutely nowhere. So shall we move on? <laughs> yeah, let's move on. Um, so, Matt, OK... No, I considered going to oh, France. Oh, you're back, OK. <laughs> I considered okay, going to okay, France. Okay, excellent. I was going to go to Carcassonne or Limoux oh, or one okay. of the other, you know, the, the lower-grade teams. And just purely 
you know, <laughs> cigarette, small espresso, just getting chunky and happy. Do okay. you know what I mean? Yeah. Instead, just you went to Toronto and, and did the did same similar. thing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, and then St Helens, your dream club, where it all began. You're a boyhood fan. They come calling. That must have been like full circle moment. You've achieved. Yeah. Was that the? Yeah, I've done it. I've made it. <clears throat> um, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's time for Saints, but I haven't proved anything. Um, I still haven't proved anything yet. We've, you know, I've played, what, maybe eight, eight or nine games. Yeah, well, you're still at the top um, of the table, aren't you? So we've got a long way to go. Yep. We've got a long way. Like, I, want, I want to win things. Uh, you know, certainly as a team, but, you know, I've got really high standards. You know, coming second, is it enough? You know, reaching the top, the top four, reaching the semi-finals, they're not enough. You've got, you've got to win things and, you know, pressure's quite high to, to, to win these things, so. Who puts that pressure on this club, do you think? I think, it's, it the... I think it's driven within, like the playing group. You know, do you expect more of each other? Do you always expect, like, the high standards? Do you expect, you know, to every training session, it's your best training session? Uh, it's like you're losing, you're losing a day. Um, so, yeah, I think the players drive it within themselves, which is good, you know, we've got a really good culture. Um, and it's evident that's why they've been so successful over the last five years. So when you go back to the semi-final last year, obviously it was Catalan, your team, you were playing for them at the time, knocked out St Helens, who were going for the drive for five. Do any of your teammates now talk about that and, and that moment? Because obviously the story was Sam and what yeah. Sam did, final, like seconds to go, scoring that try to win the game and, of course, his final game being at Old Trafford. Then on the other side of things was, of course, James Roby. So what are the conversations? Is it... So if, no one really brings it up, to be fair. Really? Yeah, not, feel, not with you anyway. Yeah, not, not. I feel like they just forget about the losses and, you know, they've got a lot more wins. So they've probably all on time a bit more. But, yeah, it was a, it was a great game to be, to be involved in. Yeah. I think knowing as well that I was already coming to St. Helens at that point and... You know, hopefully Sam was scored to try to hopefully send us out on a on a high, which wasn't to be, but um, yeah, it was a it was a crazy game. Yeah. Yeah, just on, on Matt as a player, um so when, when he signed here, you know, when you sign anybody or you bring anybody in from outside of your organization, like there's an element of you're not sure where they're at, like, you know, essentially what sort of their level is or like what the standards are or you know what they think is important and there's like an education process that you sort of like try and indoctrinate that person and to get your mindset or your club's culture and and i chatted to wello after you'd signed and he said the biggest compliment i can give is that he literally doesn't need any coaching on all of the things we find valuable so effort enthusiasm commitment energy attention to detail so for matt i'm really interested to hear you say that you will do exactly what you're told. Yeah. And, and, and if anything, that's just perfect for a high-performing culture like Saints. I feel like, you know, I leave the, leave the thinking to, to the smarter players, you know, to your Jack, your Johnny, you know, like your Lewis Dodd, like, they're the players what, they're the smart players, they're the players what play in the half day, they yeah. get us on the pitch. I mean, everyone else just do your own job, you know, which Saints do pretty well here. Yeah. Um, everyone does their own job well and, yeah, you know, and, and the rest will take care of itself. Yeah, the, I need to talk about being a back rower as yeah. well. Obviously, it's a position I spent a lot of time. And like in media, what we tend to talk about in football, we talk about you know strikers and people who score goals. And in rugby league, because we love to show tries, we talk about wingers or mm. ball players or people who actually you know maybe create opportunities. But for people who don't understand, back row for me is one of the most challenging positions on a rugby league field for loads of reasons. You're a forward, so you got to you got to work hard yeah. it's an 80 minute performance it's not like a front row where you get wheeled off for little spells mm. you're playing 80 minutes constantly top topping the tackle count you're the link between your middle defenders and your edge defenders you're always making massive decisions aren't you in yeah. that position uh, you know i'll be biased i reckon it's probably one of the hardest positions to play like you said the your fitness level has got to be up there for 80 minutes and you, you know, you're making three or four tackles in a set and then you've got to get back behind the ball for play two and three for take a carry in the next the next one and then again you've got the link with your halves link with your centers and you know um, yeah it's pretty difficult yeah it's i think it's, I, it's, it's pretty difficult probably the most difficult position in the pack so play. you think an underrated position do you think matt's an underrated player or uh, do you think i don't think he's underrated not by people who know what they're looking at now i think he's been you know one of the catalan, best back rowers in the game yeah yeah been standout back row for catalan thinking his opening eight and nine games here 
showed exactly not just his defensive stuff and all the effort stuff and all the character stuff, which I think he gets right, is that he's got an ability to score. You, you, you can score tries, can't you? Yeah, I managed to get over a fair few, which is nice. How many? But I feel... Oh, Career-wise? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. He does. I don't know. Jane, do. I don't know. Have a guess. 30, 40, maybe? 26. And is you it? went way too high, yeah. No way. I'm joking. Surely not. He's lying. I'm He's got no idea. I'm, I'm thinking of it. In one year. In one year. <laughs> <laughs> one year. <laughs> too good. Very good. I mean, that was top try. That was witness. After... That was just witness first That's year. That was top try. after the first two games, yeah. <laughs> it was. I saw that. Sneaky little Matt Whitley at the top of the yeah, try. I've not, not scored since, so. <laughs> and you're not going to score in the next oh. few weeks either. No, next nine. <laughs> next nine weeks. Yeah, which is nice. He's in a barren spell. Yeah. Come nine weeks, he won't have scored for a long time. I know. I know. So, OK, on the bench podcast, we have a segment on the bench, off the bench, on the bench is something you want to see less of in rugby <sighs> league. Off it is something you want to see more of. Matt Whitley, we gave you the heads up. You've had some time to think. Would you like to do on or off first? In French. <laughs> uh, off. Off. OK, so something you want to see more of in the game. Yeah. Go for it. Um, I think taking more games on the road. So, oh, you've seen with Hulk KR, they've done an agree agreement I mean, with Amsterdam for the next five years. When we was at Catalan, we took a game now to Barcelona. Yeah. You know, I think, yeah, taking, taking games away and making a bit of a, you know, a bit of a thing about it. Where would you take the game? I'm not sure. You had like... one choice. I've always fancied a game in St. Lucia. You know? All oh, oh, right, that's yeah, far, yeah, that yeah, far yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah Caribbean. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, Caribbean. Not so sure in the summer, though. No, yeah, we, yeah, a lot of air conditioners yeah. would be fine. Maybe indoor. Indoor, an indoor, indoor. game. The air Maldives. Condition. The Maldives. Yeah. Why nice. not? On the sand. Yeah. Where no, would you, Jenna Brooks? Um, I would do, like, maybe Oman yeah. in, in the winter. But, unfortunately, presentation is from Osterley in London, yeah. so that means that you won't be there. You'll no. be in a studio. No, but I'm a Touchline reporter, so I would be there, because yeah. I'm, not, yeah, I'm not in studio, in am I? Yeah. <laughs> Down uh, to Jenna Brooks in a mom, because yeah. she's on the Touchline talking do, yeah, to Matt, that's... legend Matt Whitley. <laughs> St Helens legend. OK, I like it. I'm 100% yeah. off the bench. Um, IMG, RFL, let's see it. Let's I think see so. But if you're going to do it as well, be ambitious. Like, if we're going to do it, take it on the road. So not to Coventry be, or... Yeah. You know, Cardiff. like, or even, even Amsterdam. Wales. Even Amsterdam's a Elland little Road bit... for Magic Weekend. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying Amsterdam's great, but it's still a bit like we're just getting the p &O ferry from all over there. And it's definitely a sponsorship activation with the ferry company, isn't it? I mean, but... I would definitely take Amsterdam over Elland Road, personally. Like, yeah. Magic, yeah, like... yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd like to. Why do we do something in Dublin? Should Magic Weekend not be in Dublin? Magic Weekend in Mexico, that means. Mexico. Isn't it? Mexico, yeah. Tulum. Yeah. Now we're talking. That's what I'm saying. Good. Be ambitious, yeah. is my message. Okay, done. I like it. Yeah. Fantastic. Off Tick off the bench. Uh, take games elsewhere. John, what is your off the bench? My, my off the bench is something that I've watched in football, and I think we need to bring it into rugby league. It is, as players are walking off the pitch at the end of the game, I want to see more players covering their mouths when they're talking. More players covering you know, like, their mouths as though you can't... Yeah. So, right, every time when you see the end of a football game, they're yeah. that petrified of getting the lips red and them saying something dodgy, they cover their mouths. Right. I get it, right? It builds intrigue. I'm now thinking, what the f*** are they saying? What are they saying? Why is it so intrigue? What, what sort of dodgy stuff are they talking about? Whereas rugby league players, they're just, like, chatting. It, um, there's no mystery about it. Uh, the, the counter so, to that is... A sky, what I want us to do is bring in a lip reader. Yeah, so he, well, why don't we just ask Matt, what do you, what do you talk about when you're walking off the pitch? After you've um, won a game. Could be anything from, like, you, uh, most of the time it's not even about the game. Oh. You're just catching up with players that you've not seen for so why a are few the, months. So why do football players cover their mouths then? I don't know, they're a bit theatrical, aren't they? But why? <laughs> what are they saying? Usually it's not even like the English football players. I know, so but what? You have to get a, like a Brazilian. A well, Brazilian. Is it, is it Portuguese you speak in Brazil? Yeah. That's like a Portuguese <laughs> yeah. like, lip reader in on yeah. Sky. I think that'd be great, though. Well, I think let's get a lip reader in and we can just have subtitles of what they're saying mm. as they're walking off the pitch. And then players yeah. will start to do this. Yeah. Off the okay, bench, off the covering bench. your mouth when off you talk. Off the bench. I feel like that's more of an on the bench, personally. I want yeah. to see more of it. I want to see players covering the mouths. OK, off the bench. All right. I'm not, I, I don't know about that. Um, neither here nor there. Maybe... I, Probably not. What about you, Jenna Brooks? 
I don't know. I'm just thinking. I got my phone out before as well. I, I don't think I had an off the bench this week, unfortunately. I've got two on the benches, though. Does that count? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so let's go to you. I, I'll do my on the bench. Well done. So, on the bench. I'm not a fan at the minute of seeing, like, Hull KR, Hull FC, for example, like, trading players. They're arch rivals. Yes. So I find it, like, Jack Brown. Um, there's talk that Jordan Abdul, uh, I know he's at Catalan at the minute, on loan from Hull KR, but now Hull KR are potentially going to sell him, give him to Hull FC. Like, I'm so you want to see people go, not never in your life are we giving him to... Well, they're arch rivals. He's such a great player. Like, well, I don't yeah. know. I just I've, There's a question mark over it for me. It doesn't really happen. Wigan and Saints. Saints. Yeah, not, when they don't off, do it, do they? Often. Smeeks. Matty Smith. Yeah. Matty Smith. Smith. I was thinking Gary Luke Connolly. Thompson. But, yeah. Yeah. Luke Thompson. Luke Thompson, but there was the gap in the middle. Yeah, I don't think that went down too well with the Saints fans. No. But, oh, no yeah, I, I think that's a good one, actually. Yeah. So what you're saying, it makes the sport feel, like, small and a bit like... You want there to be genuine rivalries, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do. They'd ne like, they'd never, do never yeah. in a million years will, you, will we give you... Like, we do not want you to have any chance of winning. I like it. It's ruthless, but... Yeah. Yeah, go for it. OK, cool. Uh, so you're on the bench. Something you like to see less of? Um, I think the loot fixtures. Uh, yes. I think it's like a long old playing, season. Playing half of... Half of the league, an extra game, it doesn't really make much sense. It's like, you want to keep on a fair, a fair playing ground, but you know, like we have to play, I think Huddersfield three times this year. Um, it is weird. Like some teams are playing like London three times or Hull FC three times. It's just, just keep it level. We play each other home and away or Would you home and away be playing and then London again. Three or times? Not. Is that what you're saying? You'd rather be no, playing? <laughs> no, I'm not going to say that, Jenna. <laughs> I, in it, but isn't it weird, right? We're obsessed with fairness. So we've got a salary cap to make things fair. Like we always talk about the fairness of refereeing decisions and, and, and everything being equal. Yet the fixture list is completely not fair. Yeah. It is just an extremely long season, really. And then you throw in a, a completely different competition in the Challenge Cup. And it's, I mean, it's, it's a lot for players. But do you know how players. the fixtures worked out? I know, but you're going to tell us. League position from the previous yeah. year. Odds play evens oh. in your league finish. So it, it can distort things incredibly because just by fortune, let's say second, fourth, sixth, end up being like really good clubs who've slightly underachieved in the following year. You know, then the other yeah. one, three, five, seven, they're getting stiffed. They're paying them an mm. extra time. So it's not fair. I agree. Get rid of it. Okay. Luke Get rid of it. is gone. So two good ones. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. John, let's On the off. bench. On the bench. Uh, grown men with computers, and specifically grown sportsmen with computers. I'm not talking laptops or PCs. I'm talking games consoles. Okay, so Where not you... computers. Let's clarify that because computers... Well, it's a computer. Well, it's a... Games a computer. computer game. Yeah, grown men who should know better, who are well into the 20s, who are sat fictionally shooting at each other, fictionally doing anything with headsets on in the spare room at home, making themselves immediately sexually unattractive to the women <laughs> in their lives. Is there anything less attractive than a grown man like that? You know, like playing a computer game? Jenna, you do, does it? No. What it's, if it's not in the spare room? What if it's in your living room? What, that's even what, worse. What if, it, what if it's in your living room? What and... psychopath plays his computer in the living room? The kids are like, Matt. <laughs> not Matt, they're like, Dad. Yeah, Dad, that, here's, my, here's my phone. <laughs> here's I'm, my phone. I'm, play, I'm playing golf. <laughs> Sorry, kids, you can't so watch the on, Weebles. You can't watch the Weebles. That, are you, you one of these people that play their computer? In the fridge, he's just, just admitting it in his room. front room. No, the so, psychopath. So there's a, there's a little bit behind it. So a couple of weeks before, I had to have my shoulder operation. Though. You've not just got a computer. No, I went playing golf. I had a golf lesson. And then a couple of weeks later, I got injured and you know, I had to have surgery. So I've not been able to play golf. Playing the golf game on my PlayStation. <laughs> See what make, I mean? Make up for it. Me and my mates have been he's playing been, together. So he's been playing fictional golf. So when you hit a really good golf shot, do you like boom? Little, little fist bump. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rub it, rub it into a mate and then yeah. it's, his, it's his goal then. I just think like we demonise lots of things in sport, but we should ask. You should ask a questionnaire like, do you have a computer, a games console? What games do you play? For if it's a war game, we're not signing you. If yeah. you're playing games where you're shooting at each other online, we're not signing you. If you're playing it on your main TV in your main living room, not signing you. If you're playing golf... Why do you feel so passionately about this? I'm just I I'm just found confused. it strange. I just remember when headsets started coming out, 
and then the lads would run home from training and they'd all sit in the spare rooms getting like no interaction with the family just playing computer games and i found it strange okay so i find it was, never, it was never allowed to play, that's and, why. Yeah, there's and something, I, I guess I have to apologise. John wasn't allowed to play in his games. I was bullied, I was bullied online playing I cost. need to <laughs> apologise to our listeners because we're now out of time and what thrilling last, what two-minute <laughs> chat that was. Wow. John, Thank you. Uh, I was going to say appreciate download, your time. Download and subscribe the podcast. Matt's yeah, just done it. Matt five, has. Yeah, yeah Matt, has. five stars. Thank you so much. Uh, nine weeks and counting. Can't wait to see you back out on the pitch. Can't wait to hear from you, fans at home. As you've just heard, we are desperate for on and off, so please send them in. Thank you.